time for another lesson in our Bible. And I'm so glad you're joining me today so we can learn about a pair of twins who are the sons of Isaac. We'll be reading in the Old Testament today. Did you bring your Bible? I have mine. Let's go ahead and we'll start with prayer. And we're going to ask the Lord to help us be good listeners today. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson time about Esau and Jacob and all the things that we're going to learn about telling the truth and being careful with what we say. We thank you for your truth in the Bible and all the lessons that we learn. We thank you. Now help us have ears to hear and learn about you through your word. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, this morning's lesson is about a pair of twin sons, and they're the sons of Isaac and Rebekah. And there was a time when Isaac was 40 years old. We're going to start reading today in Genesis chapter 25. Go ahead and open your Bibles, and we're going to look at verse 19. In this verse, it's going to tell us about Isaac's sons. Go ahead and follow along with me now. Verse 19. Now there are the records. These are the records of the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham became the father of Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as his wife. And when uh, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, because she could not have children, and the Lord answered him and Rebekah, and they were expecting. In verse 22, it says, The children struggled together within her. And, they, and she said, If it is so, why am I this way? So she went and prayed and asked the Lord. It says she inquired of the Lord. And in verse 23, it tells us what the Lord said. He said, the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples shall be separated from your body. And one people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. This was quite something for her to hear from God, because it was unusual for the oldest child not to be the one to receive the blessing and the birthright from the father which meant that he would have authority and receive all of the wealth and possessions from his father. But here God is telling her that the younger one will serve um, above the older one. Very unusual. So now look at verse 25. She delivered the twins, and the first one came out, and he was red. He had red hair all over, and he was hairy. And they named him Esau. Look at verse 26. And after that, his brother came forth, and he was holding onto Esau's foot. So he came out, and they named him Jacob. And Isaac was 60 years old when the twins were born. Isn't that something that they had two twins that didn't look alike? Esau was red-haired, and he had a lot of hair on his body. And Jacob wasn't like that. He had smooth skin. When the boys grew up, in verse 27, it says Esau became a skillful hunter. He liked to be outside, and he liked to go and get wild animals. He was called a man of the field. But Jacob was a peaceful man, and he liked to live inside he liked to dwell in the tents. They weren't alike, were they? Now, Isaac loved Esau because he liked the food that he brought. And Rebekah loved Jacob. Isn't that something here? We're going to find out about even the name that um, Jacob has. Because Jacob's name means he deceives. Jacob also means he cheats. And that was the name that was given to him. We'll find out more as we look along. And it says that the twins were born. They were quite different. And Isaac, their father, 
He was happy about the twins. Wouldn't you be happy to have two sons? Well, in verse 29, it says, Jacob had cooked stew. And what happened was Jacob was living in the tents and he was inside cooking stew. And his brother came out after hunting all day. And he hadn't, he was so tired. It says that he almost was ready to faint. And Esau said to Jacob, please just give me something to eat. He was quite hungry. I want that red stew that you made. For I am so hungry, he said, and therefore they changed his name to Edom. But listen, Jacob said in verse 31, First, sell me your birthright. What? And Esau said, Well, behold, I'm about to die. And so what use is my birthright to me? He didn't value it. And he was ready to give it to his brother because he was so hungry. And Jacob said, first, you must swear to me that I get your birthright. And Jacob gave Esau bread and he gave him the lentil stew and he ate it. And he rose up and went away. And then Esau, well, he didn't value his birthright. And this is where the trouble begins. Go ahead and we'll look at chapter 27 because there's more for us to look at. Jacob is going to deceive his brother and he's going to deceive his father and he's going to get help from his mother. And this has everything to do with Jacob being the younger one who will be in charge and the older one will serve him, just as the Bible says. In verse 27 it says, Now it came about when Isaac was old and his eyes were too dim to see, that means he's blind. That he called his older son Esau and said to him, My son, and Esau said, Here I am. And Isaac said, Behold, now I am old and I'm very close to death. Please take your gear and go out in the field and go get some meat and make me a savory dish. And when you come back, I am going to say a blessing over you. Well, guess what? Esau was ready to do that, and he went. But someone was listening. And maybe she shouldn't have been, but Rebecca was listening, and she said, Oh, I want Jacob to be the one who gets the favor. So Esau went out to go get the meat, and Rebecca went and got Jacob. And you know what she said. She said, Do everything I tell you to do, son. She's going to be tricky here. That's not a good thing to be tricky. And so Rebekah said to her son Jacob in verse 6, Behold, I heard your father speaking, and this is what you must do. You must be take the place of your brother, and I'll make the stew, and you go in, and you get the blessing. We'll trick him. And Jacob wasn't sure about this. He even said, I don't even look like my brother. My skin is smooth, and, and Esau is hairy, and he smells like he's been out in the field. Well, Rebekah had a plan. And she said, son, do exactly what I tell you to do. So he brought in the food that was necessary to make the stew. And then she went ahead and she got Esau's clothes and put them on her son Jacob. And then he, she gave him the stew. And then she put some um, hairy skins on his arms and on the back of his neck. She wanted to trick her husband into giving the blessing to Jacob and it wasn't his to get so he did everything that she said and he went ahead and went into his father and at first his, his father said uh, he walked in and he said my father and he said is that you it didn't sound like his voice he lowered it to kind of trick his dad and then they went right in and and he didn't believe it was Esau at first but then he got close to him and he smelled his clothes and he felt the, the skins that were on him. And he said, okay. And he had the stew. And then he said, I'm going to bless you now. And he spoke over him. And Isaac said to his son, first of all, I said, how did you make this so quickly? And Jacob lied. He said, because the Lord your God caused it to happen to me. Wait a minute, did God help? 
No, God did not help. He's tricking, he's sinning, and he's saying that God helped him do it. But really, God wasn't a part of wanting this to happen. But watch what happens next. So he said, I'll go ahead and eat it. And then the father Isaac said to him, come close, kiss me. He smelled him and then he said, okay, and I'm going to give you the blessing. He speaks the blessing over him, which really means that Jacob is going to receive everything that his father owns, all of his possessions and his wealth. And then he says, many people will serve you and the nations will bow down to you and you will be the master of your brothers. So he's given him all the authority, which is part of getting the blessing. In verse 29, the next part of our story is called the stolen blessing. And this is really sad. And it's because Isaac got tricked because Jacob and Rebekah lied. Well, guess what? It came about that after he was finished, Esau came in from the field and he had hunted the meat and he got ready to make it. And when he went into his father, um, Isaac, his father, said to him when he went in, Who are you? In verse 32. And he said, I'm your son. I'm your firstborn Esau. And then Isaac was trembling and he was really upset about it. And he said, well, who was it that brought me this? And remember, he couldn't see. Well, he got tricked. And Esau heard the words of his father as he explained all that happened. And he cried and he says, oh, my father, can't you even give me some kind of a blessing? Can't you help me with this? Well, he couldn't change his mind with what he'd given the son. So what he did was he, they cried together. And then he said, I'm going to say these words of blessing over you. It was such a sad time for Esau and for Isaac. And you know that when Esau found out what happened, he was so angry, he wanted to kill his brother. Does any good thing come from lying when you don't tell the truth? No. It hurts others, and it hurts you too. Jacob had to go and leave the country. His mother sent him away. Esau found out he wanted to kill his brother. He tricked him out of his birthright and his blessing. His whole life's reward for being the first son was gone. So, now we find out. God will provide for us. Don't you believe that? The Bible says that God will give us everything we need. Is it ever a good idea to lie to get what you want? Oh no, it is not. We should always tell the truth. Being deceitful is a sin, and it hurts others and ourselves. What's our Bible verse today? It's in Exodus 20:16. The Bible tells us, You shall never or you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And what that means is don't be a liar. If you're telling part of the truth, but not all of the truth, then it's a lie. Always tell the truth. Always be honest. And we need to be careful what we say. If you're not sure of what the truth is, you can say, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Don't make anything up. We always tell the truth. So we don't want to be deceitful because it hurts others. It's a terrible sin. And God is asking us to be truthful and to be honest in all that we do. Nothing good came from this. It was a, it's a very sad story when you think about it. But what could we learn today? Be careful with your mouth what you say. Always tell the truth. And if you're not sure of the answer, be truthful and say, I'm not sure or I don't know. But always tell the truth and be honest. Oh, that makes me think of a song. It goes like this. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Will you sing that with me? It's a real easy song. I think you might even know it. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Isn't that a good thing to learn from this story today? 
the Bible tells us to be honest and to be truthful and to always speak the truth. And be love tells the truth, doesn't it? So today, as you're thinking about Jacob and Esau, the twin brothers who weren't alike, let's be the, let's be the kind of people that tell the truth and we won't be like Jacob. Oh, don't forget we have coloring sheets and activity pages. And let's be thoughtful, shall we, as to how we spend our time today and, and what we do and what we say. Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord, for this lesson time. Thank you that you want us to be truthful and honest. Thank you for the truth of your Bible, that the Word of God is true. And we thank you, Lord, that we can have um, be strong and healthy this week. Help us be careful with our mouth and be loving and kind to our people. And we thank you in Jesus' name for this lesson. We thank you. Amen. Well, that was really a lesson to remember. Always tell the truth. And I have one more thing to say. I love you.